Uh, my name is Mike Mankey. I've been with uh, Freshwater Fisheries since 2014 at the Nechaka White Sturgeon Conservation Center and I am currently the manager of this facility. There's an aging population of white sturgeon in the Nechaco River that uh, is, is failing to recruit. So they're failing to uh, produce juveniles that join the population of white sturgeon. So um, this facility was built to, uh, as a stopgap measure to get juveniles into the river uh, while, while we work on other issues in the river. And so uh, the issues in the river uh, we're looking at sediment, flow, uh, habitat, to try and recover naturally this population of white sturgeon. And so for the interim, this, this facility was built uh, to get juveniles out there as a, a founder population uh, for future generations. We're always excited when we get a hundred year old fish in our hatchery and we do every year uh, seemingly bring one or two in that are in that age bracket. But reality is that somewhere in the next decade or two those fish are going to expire simply from old age. So we're protecting the genetic diversity to fill that gap while we figure out what's wrong with the river and hopefully get back to a natural recruitment. Our goal is to actually close this facility because we were successful in fixing the river. Uh, that may take 20, 30, 40 years, but that is our goal. Uh, the conservation center's uh, uh, first and foremost goal is to protect the DNA that we have left in the species that are there, uh, to have that diversity as important in the fish population as it is in a human population. We see uh, in our demographics that we have uh, tall people, short people, wide people, skinny people, and it's important for, uh, to have as di much diversity in the fish species. Uh, the smallest guy can plays a role as much as the biggest guy. At the Nechakowitz Sturgeon Conservation Center, we use an RAS which stands for Recirculating Aquaculture System. So this system is uh, environmentally responsible because we are, we're taking river water out of the river to rear these sturgeon, but we're, we are reusing that water over and over. And so we don't waste any water. Uh, we use as little water as possible with the exception of early rearing when we want these uh, uh, larval sturgeon to have a lot of fresh water from the river to imprint uh, so that they they know this is their home. So the RAS uh, uses different treatment processes. When we suck water from the river it comes through a sand filter and then through an ultraviolet light disinfection unit and then the water goes through a biofilter which filters out ammonia uh, through the nitrification process. After that treatment, uh, the water goes into a basin where it can be heated, it can be oxygenated, uh, it can also be um, stripped of carbon dioxide, and then it's circulated back through the tanks uh, through another ultraviolet light disinfection or a UV disinfection unit. And uh, all the drains to those tanks come back through the drum filter and, and get reused. So it's a circular system and we are capable of reusing up to 99.6 percent of our water and uh, it's it also helps with retaining heat in the winter so we don't need to uh, waste energy by heating water uh, and only using that heat once so we can heat the water and reuse that heated water over and over every spring we we go out into the river and we just passed uh, when the ice comes off the river, we go out in our boat with radio telemetry equipment and we look for groups of sturgeon that um, have overwintered in different deep holes. The Nechaka white sturgeon population is known to spawn right here in Vanderhoof right adjacent to the town 
And this is the only uh, known location that um, the Nechaco white sturgeon population will spawn. Uh, this is approximately two to three meters deep with fairly fast flowing water. Uh, traditionally a, a gravel or cobble bottom of, of river. And uh, these days it's not uh, the best spawning habitat due to changes in the river, but it is their traditional spawning uh, ground and uh, they keep coming back to it. Different methods that we use for catching adult sturgeon uh, include set lines and angling. And so when we find a group of sturgeon, we start off by angling. And so that angling means uh, fishing with a fishing rod. And so we, we put a big chunk of uh, sockeye salmon on there because that's one of their favorite foods. We can uh, reel in a large adult sturgeon in about 20 minutes and perform uh, a different um, uh, tests on it to see if it's going to be a, a fish that will spawn this year and if it is we can bring it back to the hatchery. Another method that we use uh, typically later on in our, ang or our uh, fishing season is set lining and we, we deploy uh, set lines that contain between 6 and 18 hooks and those set lines uh, are deployed in, in larger areas of the river where we want to cover a lot of ground. And so a uh, typical day would uh, include setting hooks, uh, setting about 170 hooks in the river, and then going the following day and retrieving those set lines and uh, catching uh, adult sturgeon. Angling or uh, fishing with set lines will yield approximately one or two adult fish caught per day. So it's pretty tough to catch these fish. There's not a lot of fish left in the river, and so it takes quite a bit of effort to find those fish. These fish are held for up to four weeks. Uh, after they're spawned, we release them uh, immediately back into, into the Nechaco River. And all the, all the fish that we spawn here, we release with radio tags and so that we can track the progress and uh, their movements after being released. And we've caught fish in subsequent years with uh, radio tags that have spawned at the hatchery and they're doing uh, very well in the river.